Hi, we're glad you're here, and we're about to begin. Five, four, three, two, one. KenCast After Dark. Stimulating conversations all night long. And here's your host, Ken Cole. Hello, everyone, and welcome to KenCast After Dark. It's great to see you tonight. I think we have a great show for you. You're going to really enjoy it. Uh, I hope everyone's been doing well. Uh, it's been, gosh, about a little over a month since, <laughs> since Cobra Kai Season 5 came out. And uh, we've all seen it probably multiple times at this point. Um, but what I want to do today is get into some live experiences, specifically the live experience of one huge Thomas Ian Griffith super fan. And I'm going to introduce her right now. Please welcome our special guest for tonight. It is Christine Thomas Ian Griffith Daily. Christine, welcome. Hey, guys. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> It's, it's great to see you. Thank you for joining us. And uh, I am so excited to talk to you because you went to see Thomas Ian Griffith live at FanX in Salt Lake City, mm -hmm. um, which, I mean, just what, just off the top, what were your impressions from that whole event? Um, I, I want to say it's probably one of the more or organized conventions I've ever been to. And that's not saying much because I haven't been to that many. I think uh, I worked at one years ago um, for an actor friend of mine. Uh, and then just it was a miserable experience. And I kind of said, I'm never doing it again. Uh, oh, no. So uh, after that, it was kind of like just the thing. And I'm like, OK, well. You know, if something comes up some other occasion and uh, sure enough, it's like the unexpected uh, to get uh, Thomas Ian Griffin at a convention. It's just like something that's never crossed my radar. Uh, and, uh, so it's been it was like something that just had to happen. I just had to do it. I was like, come hell or high water. And it was kind of hell getting there. So but then just to get there and just to have just such an amazing experience, is something that uh, made all that hellish crap in the beginning uh basically uh basically it was great <laughs> so uh it was nice to have all that all the good stuff happen after all the bad so oh that's great that's wonderful well i'm glad that you're here to tell us about this event because i know a lot of us wanted to go but we weren't able to go and then some some of us watching let let us know guys if you were able to go to this event and you were there with christine um we love to hear all that. Uh, let's say hi. Uh, yeah, and let us know where you're from. Jay, hello from Boston. Hi. Jay, I, I actually grew up around Boston, so it's, that's good that you're around Beantown. Uh, All Valley says, hey, Ken, hope you're having a good day so far. Uh, good to see you. Melissa Poss, the All Valley. <laughs> hi, how was your day? Good to see you. It's around. Pleasure to see you. Serena, good to see you. Uh, Brian, how's it going? Michelle, yep. Hello, hello, Projects Hive. Hello, Robana, a hello. member of the channel. Thank you. Uh, NASA, can do we have an interview with Terry Silver from jail? I, I don't know. We'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll cover that tonight with Christine. I'm very interested to get her thoughts on all of that. Uh, ben says, might put together a Terry Silver costume for Halloween. Well, good. Nice. <laughs> I mean, I think that, Christine, that's got to be one of the best Halloween costumes of all time, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, if I could, I would. I don't think I could pull it off. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ben, if you do that, please upload pictures. Uh, we need to see your costume. Um, George, it's 6 a.m. Well, thank you, George, for getting up early or staying up really early to watch right? this. It's great you're here. Cobra Kai Wisdom. Ah, hey, good to see you. Good to see you, Mike. Um, and Ben says, hey, Christine. Hey, Ben. Um, how are you? <laughs> good to and see you. Great. Braden, hey Ken, good to see you guys. Um, wonderful, thank you for saying hi. Here's Drew, good to see you, Drew O'Halley. Oh, um, the haircut. <laughs> I know it's 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 Drew. His picture has short hair, uh, which is which is pretty cool. Gabe, it's great to see you. Well, guys, we'll get to all your comments kind of as we go through our discussion tonight, and we are about to get into this convention. What happened? What happened when Christine, who runs? Thomas Ian Griffith Daily, Tig Daily on Twitter and now also on Instagram, right? Nice. Uh, so 
everyone watching this, you need to follow her on both platforms. Uh, I have a link in the description to both. Uh, she just does an amazing job of coming up with something new that's Thomasine Griffith themed every single day. So uh, it's kind of great. I know it puts a smile on fans across the world. So uh, thank you, Christine, oh, wow. for doing that. <laughs> Compliments are us. <laughs> thank you. Thank I you. <laughs> A absolutely uh, and drew says i need to update my picture <laughs> does oh, or cut your hair or is that old i don't know <laughs> yeah it's um well christine let's uh sort of get into this discussion but before we do uh let's go over some quick news ken cast news okay so we have some news, uh, guys, I don't know if you saw this today. John Hurwitz tweeted this article from Variety. Um, Who needs dragons or orcs when you've got warring middle-aged karate senseis? So, and this is in reference to the news that uh, Nielsen reported that Cobra Kai reaches nearly two, mil two billion minutes watched during the first week, which edged out both Lord of the Rings and um, House of the Dragon. So... That's pretty amazing. It is number one. And so, Christine, let me get your thoughts on this. Just as a Thomas E. Griffith fan, but Terry Silver fan, we know that Terry Silver really headlined season five and all of the marketing. Uh, how, right. how do you feel about this uh, this news? I mean, it's it's epic. It's uh, it's fantastic to see the range, the, the reach it, it's had. Um, I mean, I have people sometimes come up to me like, in the street or if I have like in the market or something like that. And well, whether or not sometimes in the beginning, it was when I was wearing obviously a Cobra Kai shirt or something. But nowadays it's like, even if I'm not wearing a Cobra Kai shirt, somehow like through the air or I don't know what it is. It's like suddenly like Cobra Kai will just come up in the dark corners of a supermarket or something. And then sure enough, I'll have to be like, Oh my God. Oh, Hey, are you a fan? And then they're <laughs> like, yeah, do you watch? And I'm like, yeah, I like, I watch it, you know, um, kind of a little bit. I've gotten involved somehow through uh, the magic of a page I run, but I don't go into too much detail. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's incredible. I mean, everybody I talk to is just like head over heels about the show. And I think in light of, um, you know, with these ratings and everything, I, I feel like we're going to definitely get that season six, hopefully. I mean, that's my take. I feel like with all the hype and everything, I feel like Netflix will renew it. And I think we will get season six. Um, and I think as a, you know, Thomas C. and Griffith fan, it's such a big deal uh, because it is his big comeback um, after being gone since 08. So then just right. to see all the excitement for not only the show for him coming back and just there's a lot of love for the character i mean there's equally as much uh dislike of the character naturally because <laughs> he's a quote-unquote villain but i think i think it's a good thing i think it's really positive i think it's great for him i think it might um stir the pot a bit and maybe who knows maybe there might be some new roles coming in or some other new project uh, which i'm psyched for we'll see what happens I know. And that's the one thing about Thomas C. Griffith is that he can do anything. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like he could act or he could write or he right. could produce or he could um, compose, you know, it's like, or he could play music. Uh, it's right. really, it's incredible. Um, or martial arts. He could probably be a martial arts champion. Um, yeah. You know, it's uh, so I think all of us should follow Thomas C. Griffith and your page because we have no clue what, what uh, we might see from Thomas E. Griffith coming forward, yeah. but we all hope, I think, to see him on screen again as soon as possible uh, yeah. in whatever role. Um, so, and that's the other thing too. With this news <laughs> that Cobra Kai edged out both Lord of the Rings and House of the Dragon, man, that would be that would be rough if they didn't renew. It, it's like you almost have to renew it. Right. It's not I like they came in like number two or number five or something like that. Like they came in number one. Yeah, I mean, it's repeated repeated uh, ratings. Uh, you know, they were uh, number one on Netflix for what, like, I don't know how many weeks, uh, uh, venturing into a month or so. I think they were number one, and then they slowly tapered off to four, and then it came back again and then went back down again. But um, I, I just think, I mean, to beat Lord of the Rings, a Lord of the Rings sequel or prequel, I, I've been a Lord of the Rings fan for 
for years, but I honestly, I been kind of out of the loop after the movies. I haven't even watched this new show, but um, mm -hmm. it being a continuation of that story. And then there's the House of whatever, House of Dragon, which is the Game of Thrones Targaryen spinoff. It's kind of like, uh, it's like another sort of Cobra Kai is essentially a glorified uh, continuation of the Karate Kid story. So for that to happen, and then amongst two other sequel, prequel type things, I think it's phenomenal. I think it's it's great. I think to just be on top of all three of those, it's great. Uh, yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. And Gabe says, "Love the Instagram page." Thank you. So, <laughs> yeah, everyone definitely go follow Tig Daily on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Mouse Man says, "Hey, can you think Terry's mentally ill?" Uh, <laughs> oh no, no, not at all. Um, actually, uh, I did do a video on that called "Is Terry Silver a Psychopath?" Uh, check that out if you're interested in Terry Silver's Phenomenal. mental health. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, what else do we say? Uh, Alexander says, "How Silver says no mercy." I like that. Um, uh, what else do we have? Thanks for all the comments guys nasa says i'm hoping we get at least two more seasons uh thomas Ingram for president 100 percent agree <laughs> uh that's great uh cobra kai wisdom uh thomas Ingram really is a renaissance man yeah he really Hardcore. is Ale alexandra backs him up on that um josh says do you think terry and chosen would be friends when they were young in another miyagi verse that's interesting because uh chosen was also kind of like a bully and kind of angry, uh, maybe for different reasons. Um, right. I don't know. It'd be interesting if they kind of met up at the right time in life. W would they be friends? What do you think of that, Christine? Oh, I don't know. I, I definitely think there could be a possibility. I mean, I like the, the concept of, you know, when he mentions in this big uh, katana fight that he... Um, he knew he was like a warrior just like me. And he's like, you know, nothing about honor and uh, Miyagi-Do and everything like that. But, you know, I, I think that maybe in another life it's possible. I mean, like alternate universe. Um, because I, I did see there's a lot of components of chosen uh, characteristics that kind of play into a little bit of silver. I can see it, but um, maybe just in a different light. I don't know if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah, I definitely absolutely. think that there's there could be. I mean, not just because they were both sort of quote unquote bullies, but because there's just something in their their nature. Uh, I mean, Chosen's pretty quick to catch on to things, and I think that's something that Terry Silver also has. So, yeah, yeah. I know it would be if someone wanted to explore that. I mean, I'd be completely on board with uh, with watching that or reading that. Yeah. So. Um, very cool idea. Drew says, love your Instagram page, Christine. Thanks, You've been Drew. posting some amazing content. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. It's good. And, and, it's, you know, I just started, so I was a little weary about uh, managing two pages at the same time, but it's so far so good. So any positive uh, input is great. Thanks, Drew. Absolutely. And okay, so next, I need to get your opinion on this, Christine. Uh, Okay, so I, guys, I just did a video called Terry Silver is not dying. You know, this is kind of like counter to these theories that are going around that Terry Silver is dying. Of course, I can't stand by and, and see people say that this wonderful character is just going to die. You know, we, we don't want that to happen. But uh, anyway, if you guys uh, haven't seen it, it's hopefully a lot of fun to watch. And I come up with an alternate theory um, that he's not dying, but that the opposite is happening. But Christine, what just from your perspective as a fan of the show and fan of Thomas Ian Griffiths and Terry Silver, uh, what what do you think about this idea that he's dying? Well, well I mean, it's this theory has been going around a lot, and then uh, a lot of people uh, just argue for it. I've seen more people for it than against it, uh, and I think also there was some talk. I don't know if maybe I didn't catch up on it or I didn't hear it, but I guess there was some interview and i know which interview it is that uh uh thomas and griffith did um i think it was uh like a it was a combination podcast there was like half of it was uh an interview with him and the other half was uh some other interview with some other podcaster i can't remember what it was but anyway long story short supposedly in that uh, podcast uh he mentions 
a storyline of being terminally ill and it was cut or something. Um, I don't know. I haven't really dug into that too much. I mean, I don't really know. Maybe there was a scene or two or something's mentioned, but uh, I don't know. I, I just, I think people were catching on to the commentary of, you know, him mentioning his legacy and not having one and not having children. And then the whole thing about uh, I was supposed to die in the battlefield and people kind of have dug into that thinking that just means like he's dying and there's nothing else left for him. So he kind of just doesn't have anything to lose. Mm -hmm. So he's uh, just no holds barred, doesn't care uh, who he gets into fights with and whatever, like with chosen and just doesn't have uh, basically has a death wish kind of, but I don't know. I don't think that he is terminally ill. I think it's just like that commentary. I've heard it in a lot of different films and TV shows where uh, a villain or uh, even a hero or whatever will say like, oh, I'm not afraid to die. You know, I mean, it goes back to like Princess Bride. He goes, uh, I'm prepared to die or whatever, you know. Right. So I think, you know, I think he just, you know, he just realizes that, uh, you know, Chris is gone, like everything that he worked his way up to uh, is pretty much like tarnished doesn't really matter and I feel like uh, the whole thing about uh, the kids and stuff I think it's just for him Cobra Kai became more important than anything else and yeah he doesn't have kids but that doesn't mean that he's dying and there's nothing left for him and so he only wishes that if he had kids uh, you know he would be able to pass on Cobra Kai and then the whole thing about the hospital scene, I mean, anything could happen in the hospital. I mean, some right. he could be visiting somebody, he could be um, checking up on something, like for stingrays, the whole uh, medical care and making sure nothing goes out and nobody uh, finds out anything that they shouldn't about stingray. I mean, now he's already obviously been taken away by the cops, so it could be even maybe just a checkup. I mean, who knows? I mean, it, there's like something I did read. Somebody had posted about how uh, he's too rich. You know, he could have mm -hmm. somebody come to his house and check him out. So that kind of does make sense. I'm like, maybe he just doesn't, uh, he could leave that out, uh, right. that whole thing. Uh, so maybe, yeah, maybe even he has like a friend who's sick, someone else. It could be anything. I mean, just a hospital visit doesn't always mean death. I mean, hospitals are about what's birth, death, everything. I mean, anything happens in the hospital. So like, just right. Yeah. Well, and Chase has, agrees. Uh, Silver's too rich to die. And that, that's mm -hmm. yeah, I think I think so. I think there's a, a lot to that. Ruth yeah. says, I do not like that theory. Uh, Drew says hashtag save silver. Uh, but then we have Project Hives, uh, Hive, who says Cobra Kai has to end with at least two deaths. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Uh, maybe, maybe we don't know. It could be an epic, epic finale. Uh, and then Michelle says Terry's not dying, he is dying his hair to black. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, and that's the thing, like maybe now. It's possible, you know, Thomas King Griffith hinting at that they had a terminal illness storyline that might yeah. have been cut out. But um, why was it cut out? Exactly. Maybe it, was, I mean, maybe it was cut out because they want to go in a different direction. Yeah. Or, you yeah. know, or or maybe like last, you know, last minute they just had a change of heart. I mean, that stuff kind of does happen. I mean, uh, especially in TV, I think there's a little more leeway to toss something out and then just like you can start up a whole new thing. I mean, whereas a movie, you don't have that luxury. So I feel like, and if they're getting a second, I mean, a sixth season, then it could, it could go any way, really. I mean, realistically, I mean, maybe they threw it out. They want to go a different direction or maybe like, maybe he's not coming back. Maybe it's just jail and that's it. And then uh, it's just really tough to get out because of all the charges that he's going to have. But that being said, too, I don't think that, judging by his history, I don't think he's going to be in jail for too long. So, in, yeah. in, so I don't know. In, it's kind of a very complicated subject. I mean, I, I don't particularly love the dying theory either. Uh, I mean, I can humor it and I can understand uh, where it comes from and why people think that just because of stuff that's been dropped and different things uh, 
I mean, I think the hospital scene definitely it's become a trend. I've noticed the people who have that argument that he's dying. Uh, the hospital scene with Johnny and Carmen is like the big, uh, the kicker that sort of mm -hmm. made this whole theory come to light. I think so. I think mm -hmm. if they didn't have that, I don't, I don't think the theory would be so profound everywhere else. So we'll see. Hopefully not. I'm hoping he's not dead. This. It's not. Me too. It, it would be a waste to bring him all the way back here and just to just terminate it like that. And I, I just Cobra Kai never dies, so that's he's right. Cobra Kai. I mean, whether Christ believes it or not. <laughs> yes, so. you're. I think you're exactly right. Cobra Kai never dies. Uh, yeah. We have Josh here who says D. A. Willie Cole saves Terry. Yeah, what's Willie been up to? That's uh, right. you got to watch out for the Coles. Uh, Jay Wiggins says Terry Silver is terminally awesome, and that's true. Uh, Serena says, I think he's taking medication for his PTSD and maybe getting therapy at the hospital. Yes. Marianella says, Terry Silver is the immortal. <laughs> I like that. Um, and it's, it's true. Perfect. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's like Highlander, right? Yeah. Um, Wild Man Beyond, thank you so much for the super chat. Every super chat helps support the channel. Cobra Kai is now in the Guinness Book of World Records for most viewed film adaptation. Yeah. I just Interesting. That. Interesting. Um, thank you, Wild Man. I, I appreciate that. And I, I was not aware that it's in the Guinness Book of World Records. I'll have to, I'll have to look at that. Um, what, what do you think of that? It's well deserved, don't you think, Christine? I think so. Uh, I, I think that the shows really come up uh, pretty fast. I think the, uh, they, their roots. It's great. It's great to see a show that started so humbly, just like on YouTube, and a show that pretty much, I, from what I remember reading, that nobody really wanted to. To touch. I mean, a lot of different production companies that they took it to were just kind of like, eh, we don't, we don't know, maybe not. And then YouTube was just kind of like, okay, cool, we'll do this. And I think at that time, I think YouTube was still up and coming with their own uh, material. So mm -hmm. I think that they saw that as an advantage. So they went for it. So it's nice to see just bottom line of a show with such humble roots to come up so fast and so far. So I think, I think it's, it's great. Uh, I mean, even if it's just for being viewed, not necessarily for anything else, I think that's phenomenal. I know you're right. I mean, what a success story, just that it, it, it was kind of teetering for a while, even uh, yeah. like it never seemed to get its audience, the audience it deserved on YouTube. And then YouTube's like, eh, we're done with scripted series. And then luckily right. it got picked up by Netflix and man, it's just, I think one of the great underdog stories if you want to say of all time yeah. and and what a great show um melissa yeah. says the, i like that dying is his hair he's making more silver to get rid of the gray love it uh seth says silver will never die he'll be cryogenically frozen <laughs> um, <laughs> that's funny um well so christine we are here because we want to talk about your experience you had quite an experience uh, in Salt Lake City. <laughs> and I'm wondering if we can kind of get into that and if you can kind of sure. explain everything that went into that. Uh, so guys, we're going to start our main discussion for tonight. Ken cast discussion. All right, Christine, set the picture for us. The picture of fan X, where you got a chance to actually meet Thomas Ian Griffith. Uh, t tell us about this. Well, uh, I'm trying to think where do I begin. Uh, it was it's kind of a surreal. Uh, I, I mean, the, going into it was already like surreal, and then just once I got there, got off the plane. I mean, because I'm out in you know LA. Uh, I don't know if people know that or not. So I had short flight, about an hour and what 40 minutes, not even uh, to get there. Uh, I mean, it was hell getting there, as I mentioned before uh, we got into the discussion, uh, just because a lot of just personal stuff. And I literally flew in just for the day. Uh, I didn't stay the whole weekend because I had other obligations and things. So, but I said, you know, to myself where it's like, okay, I have a lot to do, but there's just something about this that I just can't miss. It was almost kind of like kismet. And I kind of felt like if I don't go who's going to go, you know, in, in that kind of ordeal, not to sound like, you know, egotistical or anything like that, but it's just sort of like, uh, I had a friend tell me, she's like, if you're not going to go, who else should go? Like, of course, it's like, 
of all people to go and skew, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Um, so I just decided, okay, I'm going to hop on that plane. I'll go. Um, tickets weren't too bad for the actual entry to the venue, so it was fine. Um, just getting there was tough. Um, we had a bit of an ordeal the night before. Didn't get any sleep because uh, I had to pick up somebody uh, in the middle of the night. So I was literally working on two hours of sleep and then getting on that oh, wow. plane and then getting there, uh, waiting in line and then finding out that I was in the wrong entrance. So I had to go all the way around the building. It was about like a two mile walk around to oh, finally wow. get in. And just to register, this is not even to get into the building. This is just to register and get this wow. bracelet, which I still kept. So my little oh, cool. Fanex bracelet. It's kind of ripped and this light's kind of glaring, but essentially uh, it looks kind of hospital band, but they kind of scanned you in. Uh, it's just like their way of knowing you have a ticket. So they have like a right. little barcode thing, kind of futuristic. Um then we just kind of went through security, obviously. Um, and then finally it was there uh, and then waited again in another line just to get through the curtains because for some reason uh, VIPs got in before us. So there was too many people, so they wanted to control it. So it's another half hour of waiting there. So finally around, I want to say 10, 30, 11 o'clock, uh, I got there. I got to the airport about what, nine o'clock maybe eight o'clock mm -hmm. yeah so my flight was at seven i got there around nine and then after that it was just getting to the venue so then finally i go in um but first thought is like what do i do you know do i go first do i go up first do i wait um, right you know and it's it's typical it's normal i think uh when you're meeting anybody that you kind of think of as a hero or somebody that you have uh I don't want to say the word idolize. I think that's a little bit, has a different connotation. And sometimes it's a little off. Uh, right. So let me center myself here. Okay. So, uh, yeah. And so for me, and going into that, it was kind of like, oh, well, it's like somebody that I've been watching, somebody that I've been a fan of for, I don't know, up to years. Uh, what do you say? What do you do? Uh, and I mean, in a way, I kind of thought to myself, and he, he did watch one of our videos uh that we had done one of the podcasts so i figured i may almost like maybe he knows who i am i don't know maybe uh -huh. he uh you know just if i mention like tig daily i think maybe he'll know right away or i don't know i don't know right. just a million thoughts were kind of going through my head at the time um so i was like what do i what do i do uh if he doesn't recognize me what do i do if he does i don't know it was just right. kind of like a mixed bag and i figured i don't want to drive myself into more uh anxious nerves so i was like let me just leave it at that whatever happens happens it's just it's being there was something i would never expect it to happen so i never right. thought that i would actually actually meet him uh so for me that already was like the positive so it was like no need to look at negative thoughts or any negative thinking to just go for it and do it um and i've you know i've done conventions before and meeting celebrities uh it's not like a big I don't know. I don't have that fangirly kind of thing. It just doesn't uh, really exist. I'm not like a screamer. I'm not like yelling and stuff in line, um, which there were quite a few people. <laughs> I remember for uh, when I walked by and I was noticing like Zolo's line and then uh, uh, William Zapka's line and there was like a woman just yelling, I love you, Johnny. I was like, okay. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I could never do that. That's just not me. But to more each, to each their own and power to anybody who's like that. Um, generally, I, I just like to be calm because uh, my thing is when I get nervous, I tend to talk too much. So I was like kind of afraid I wouldn't, I would do that. And I was like, I don't want to do that. Uh, but anyway, long story short. So I mustered up the courage and I got in line. There was a ADA line for the disabled and then there was right. a line for the regular uh, people. And then there was just also the uh, VIP line. Uh, that's why I mentioned regular people. So mm -hmm. I'm waiting and uh, so and I let think me, I was the Let third. me bring this up because you, you sure. have a picture, right? So, yeah. so this is, so if anyone hasn't been to a convention, everyone it's like all the celebrities they each have kind of like their own table 
right. that you can go up to and meet them, like maybe to sign something. And we have a picture, I think, of yeah. his table. Yeah. Let me bring this up. So this, so this is it. This is, yeah. this is like before things are kicking off, right? But um, or tell right, us about right. what we're what we're looking at. Uh, so that's just the table. That's the, like the banner that they had set up in the back. Uh, I took this when I don't think he was at the chair at the chair yet. So uh, I noticed like William Zapka had already started. And then there was like, uh, I think there was Sholo was signing. And then there was uh, Jacob was signing. And then he hadn't popped in yet. So then that's just like, I, I would say that's probably a handful of minutes before he sat down on the chair uh, and started signing. Uh, so they had, he had different things on the table. He had uh, posters from uh, vampires. He had stuff for uh, KK3, obviously, Terry Silver now. Um, mm -hmm. A couple of other stuff, Excessive Force. Um, he had oh, some nice. posters for that you could get signed. Well, I say posters, but more like 8 by 10s uh, sure. So, yeah. So it was kind of a little rushed because I had uh, also a photo op uh, with him, I think, at around one o'clock i think it was so by the time i got in there and then waiting in line and then um and good news his line was long and so i was really happy to see that because I, yeah. I was hoping you know he'd get a good turnout so and sure enough there was a good turnout so that's always positive uh, a bunch of people had uh, different cobra kai posters uh to get signed um i think i saw a jacket a cobra kai jacket um not too many uh bits of memorabilia uh, of their own. Mostly people were buying uh, the eight by tens or six by nines to get signed. So that okay. was cool. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, so you're in line and you're basically contemplating what you're going to say. Right. And did, did you know what you wanted signed? D did you know? Or... Yeah. Uh, okay. Actually, I uh, had it. Uh, I brought it with me. This is from this is my white belt uh, from when I started. I don't know if you could see the oh see yeah from, there from the glare, uh, and that's are my stripes from all the. Before you take every belt test, you get stripes for your uh, techniques and for like the kicking, punching. So if you excel in like your katas and you excel in your uh, well, they're called forms in Tang Soo Do. So. Uh, that's my Tang Soo Do white belt. So I started about a few years back. Uh, I mean, I had done Taekwondo years ago, um, but I ended up quitting for whatever reason. I was like 12 or 13. Uh, I can't remember why. I think maybe the, they don't call him senseis, they call him something else, but he uh -huh. was anyway, the master. He was kind of a, kind of nuts. Uh, I didn't really have a great time. So I, I figured, you know, like, Miyagi says, well, there's no such thing as bad student, only bad teacher. So I ended up stopping. But and then I picked up Tang Soo Do uh, a little while after that. I, actually, I was already in my 20s when I picked it up. So, yeah, this is my old decaying kind of dirty old white belt. <laughs> uh, then I figured, you know, they're pretty much on display now. I don't really wear it, obviously, because uh, right. I'm in a higher belt now. So I just have this on my rack and I figured... What other thing to have signed, um, you know, other than my white belt from, because they say when you uh, first start the white belt, it's kind of like your entry, your, uh -huh. uh, your pass. So a lot of people don't make it that far, you know, actually uh, right. some people end up, you know, they sign up for a karate class, they try to do it and it just doesn't work out. So right. you're just kind of like something just clicks in the brain and it just doesn't, uh, allow you to persevere through it and maybe for whatever reason maybe you just don't believe in yourself or I don't know you just think it's tough or different challenges could arise so people some people don't make it that far so my sensei is always saying that he says you know just always remember if you struggle on a belt uh, you've made it this far uh, so most people will quit uh, quickly you know so I always saw my white belt as in the beginning, I kind of saw, well, oh, whatever, this is taking me forever to get through this white belt. You know, I was having a lot of challenges and then uh, I didn't see it until after I got to like maybe the third belt, which is, I believe, orange, where I was, I realized that white belt has more meaning than I gave it. 
in the beginning. Right. So, right. and uh, to go off of that, uh, Thomas Ian Griffin is kind of the influence of why I picked up martial arts again. Wow. Uh, yeah. So for me, uh, I mean, it's around the same time. That's around 12, 13 is when I watched Karate Kid 3. Uh, so I watched Excessive Force before that, but I, <laughs> You know, and I, I did like Bruce Lee, obviously, and Brandon Lee. I, I actually mentioned that to him when I was telling him. So him, Brandon Lee, and Bruce Lee, I was like, you know, you have just two other shoes. Uh, you're kind of one of the bigger shoes that filled my journey into martial arts. Uh, I don't know if that's a good analogy to it. But, yeah. yeah, so I was thinking, you know, it would be amazing to have that person that inspired me to get this white belt to have that signed. So I figured, I mean, you know, I could have had a, a photo signed, uh, you know, things like that, but I don't know, just seemed a little more memorable, especially if it's somebody that means so much. So, and uh, Thomas Ian Griffin has always meant a good deal to me. Um, it was kind of one of those people that uh, I didn't tell a lot of people, you know, when I was younger that I was a fan. Uh, some people were always kind of like, who, who's that? Um, right. You know, and I, I like different actors growing up. Obviously, everybody kind of does. You know, you're just influenced by media and things you watch. So for me, and I was just always a fan uh, constantly. Uh, and then it's just sort of uh, after 2008 when there wasn't much going on, uh, I kind of just, uh, I was still a fan, but it was just never, uh, I was still a big fan, but I just never had a reason or a place to kind of share that so that's when I decided to make the Twitter page and everything and suddenly obviously with Cobra Kai there was like resurgence from the first season I was like there's I think he's gonna come back somehow right I was like they're already bringing back all these people and I'm like they're just inevitable so anyway long story short I was like you know he's an influence so let him have him sign this uh and uh it's just such a, an amazing experience to just share that with him uh i never thought i would share that um uh, it was something it's sort of almost emotional no. as well uh, i can imagine uh, and so so it, it so if i can let me ask you you mm -hmm. have the you have your white belt which means a lot to you and you're standing in line yeah. um kind of tell us emotionally what that's like because i'm sure you can see he's there yeah and, He's just someone that you've looked up to for so long right. and you know that you're going to meet him. It was just what, what emotions are, are kind of going through your head? Honestly, I was like, maybe by the time I got to him, I was like, there was two people ahead of me, I think. Um, and then he was like graciously signing. I think it was like, this guy had like six uh, aluminum posters for him to sign. And uh, so once he, finally got to me, he kind of, he went like this, kind of, like, he just sort of looked, he's like, hold on, wait a minute, he goes, what's your name, and I said, I was like, shocked, I was like, I don't know, I was like, I had no idea something like that was going to happen, I didn't even wow. think that he would even, he's like, what's your name, and I said, I'm Christine, and then I, the minute I even said TIG daily, he was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> he's like, this is, you're amazing. It's like, I don't even I don't even know where to begin. Uh, it just, it, it's such a fantastical uh, moment in time, I think. It just sort of like, not to sound gushy or mushy or whatever, but it just sort of felt like time stopped in a way because it's mm -hmm. kind of um, never in my mind did I think that he would even – recognize me or know like remember the name or having mentioned he even mentioned you as well he said you're watching he's like yeah you that video that you had with ken um oh man. he's like that that you just really like was so special and he just mentioned something to the effect of that uh, uh it's just so well spoken and everything that you guys talked about was just uh, phenomenal and he was mentioning that how um it's what I do is great. And just uh, like, just the support, he was just sort of very humbled by the support. And likewise, that just threw me off. <laughs> so I went in having like, okay, I'm just gonna be like, hey, I'm Christine and whatever. And I just thought like how usually how a lot of these things have gone uh, when I've met anybody. Um, I think, I don't know who I met I think when I met the actor from uh, 
What does that show? Uh, I think uh, Kim Coates from Sons of Anarchy. Yes. When I met him, uh, it was uh, just sort of like, oh, yeah, thanks for, you know, coming out. Thanks for the support. And I just sort of thought, okay, that's that. I, I literally, you know, I just didn't set myself up for anything intense or anything uh, crazy. I was like, okay, it's just going to be like that, very chill. So just in a way that was kind of to help me deal with like the nerves and the emotions going into it. Because mm -hmm. um, I just, you know, I always had this thing where I don't want to blow it. Like if I ever have a chance to meet him, I don't want to say too much, say too little, be a certain way. I mean, as we all are kind of our biggest critics, so especially something like that. I mean, it's not every day you meet somebody that you've uh, looked up to, somebody that you even maybe run a page for or you've talked about, even even somebody that you've talked to a neighbor about a hundred times, you know, even that, it's just like, there's always nerves, there's always something that's racking your mind. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just you want it to go well. And I couldn't have asked for a better experience. I mean, even thinking I was maybe too humble or I didn't share too much or whatever, but it just, it threw me off in the best of ways uh, when he mentioned uh, the podcast and he mentioned uh, just everything that I do. Cause I'm always kind of like, I, you know, people are always telling me, you know, you do such a good job. You're amazing. And every day uh, uh, I can handle compliments, but sometimes it's just uh it's just inside of my nature to be, oh, thanks. You know, I don't do too much. It's not a, like, you know, I, it's really just photos. It's really, you know, I try to find what I can and post it. And I was just, I don't know. It's maybe it's just not to glorify it. I don't know. My, my friend says you're too humble. <laughs> so you got to <laughs> just kind of open yourself up to it more and just, you know, I could talk about stuff. I can, you know, go into detail, but I just don't like talking about myself. And so that's right. kind of, uh, the only thing I regret, I would say, is me not being uh, more, like, excitable and jumpy. I mean, I was really excited, but a lot of it was just sort of, like, once, you know, uh, he mentioned uh, what I do, it was just sort of, like, oh, my God, like, I, all I could say was thank you about 100 right. times and just right. smiling and talking. And, I mean, we spoke about a few things. We talked about, uh, you know ulterior motives and he <laughs> thought it was great that i mentioned that uh because it's such a niche kind of a film um and then we talked about how that sword fighting scene because i actually was a fencer for a period of time uh so and swordsmith so that's always been something mm. i don't i don't talk about that that often but for me it's just it's just a big it's a hobby that i kind of did before uh, jumping back into uh karate so for me, I've always had a passion for katanas and I have a little collection of my own. So uh, I just had to bring that up. I was like, it's so special to me that you're able to use that skill again. And that he talked about how um, the big three were just so open to him working with it again and uh, showing off that skill. And I thought that was just amazing that they did that. So yeah. it was nice. I mean, we talked for about I want to say a good 20 minutes or people, I started feeling behind me, there's this line accumulating and I'm here just <laughs> talking and talking. And it's just, I, that's, that's another thing about conventions where it's sometimes you, um, there's such a time constraint to everything. I mean, for the right. actors to get to their photo ops, for people in line to just sort of move in and get the, the stuff signed. Uh, and there's obviously a handler there that's always kind of, Sometimes you get a, a dud. Sometimes you get a good person that's just like, eh, whatever. You know, talk more than you want, whatever. Who cares? Um, right. Fortunate enough, the person that was handling his line was uh, really nice. And they were very uh, accommodating. So she didn't think twice that I was taking a little too long. But, of course, inside I was kind of like, oh, no. Like, <laughs> I'm talking too much and things like that. So uh, we did that. And we just took a quick uh, selfie as well. Uh, I mean, I just sort of thought, why not? You know, in the moment, I was like, okay, maybe I'll just get the belt signed and then just sure. have a nice chat. But because uh, I already had a photo op uh, scheduled. Um, so, I'm, I mean, I was kind of inexperienced with the whole thing myself, too. And then just sure. going about this massive event by myself. Usually when I've gone, it's been with somebody else. So it's kind right. of like it's a little intimidating, uh, even though I do pretty well with crowds. I could be sociable, but. Uh, 
it's a different crowd. I don't know how else to put it. Sometimes, you know, you get your share of, you know, really like people who are really interested in what you're there for and they want to talk to you. And then there's other people that are just sort of like, eh, whatever, like, I don't care. Like, I'm not, I'm not here for that reason. And it, it was just sort of, it was nice to get a, a nice good batch of people around. So um, and people were kind of asking me afterwards, they're like, oh, like, what you run a page? Like I was hearing uh -huh. you when you were talking to him and I'm like, well, yeah, I do. I mean, if you're a corporate Kai fan, I don't want to name drop, but if you're on Twitter, this is who I am. And if you're a fan, so it was nice to see a good turnout for him and not yes. to have a lot of like unusual people coming up and just sort of like hassling you as a fan of something. And uh, I don't know if that makes any sense, but it's, it's a very, it's an odd place. Uh, I mean, uh, but my experience was phenomenal. So uh, That's it was a it was really rushed, but uh, yeah. I was glad. And then in the photo ops, it was such such positive, like uplifting moments. And actually, I had a photo with him and uh, William Zapka, and it was kind of funny. I had an idea for a whole funny pose, quirky pose, but <laughs> it's just so quick to slap that photo and quickly, you, you know, get you through that line. It's sort of like cattle call, um, but I, I wouldn't trade the experience for anything. Uh, I always thought in my head, maybe I would, if I met him ever, I would run into him at one of the Cobra Kai events, things like that, mm -hmm. but didn't happen, but it's okay. I'm okay. It's all right. If I had to, you know, shuffle in some dough to go see him. So and well, I gladly do it. I'll do it again if there's another event. So for sure. Well, that sounds incredible. And, uh, that you got to talk to him and he you were, got to talk about so many different things yeah. and that he, he recognized the great work that you do. Uh, and everyone, go follow. Look at the links in the description. Follow Tig Daily on Twitter and Instagram, and you'll see all the great work that Christine does that Thomas and Griffith complimented, rightly so. Um, and you'll get to basically she puts out just to anyone who doesn't already follow you. You do something Thomas and Griffith themed every day. And you put that out on Twitter and Instagram. So definitely follow that. It's great work that you do daily Thank you. Uh, for Thomas A. Growth fans, which is great. Yeah. Um, I mean, and I know I don't say it a lot. I know I don't, uh, like we were mentioning earlier, uh, it's just a force of habit to be, uh, not to downplay what I do, but it's just, it, it was so nice to hear. I mean, I it's always nice when somebody's telling me, oh, you do such a great job and, uh, I, I'm actually so grateful for all of you guys that follow everybody that even who says anything to me or likes anything. It's just such a, a blessing, honestly. Um, and you can, I mean, always just tell him you're always just so supportive of what I do. And, you know, sometimes I had a knack to, if you have your bad moments, you're always like, Oh, well, I don't know if I do anything or if it accomplishes anything, but another moment that happened at the event where, uh, we were talking and he's mentioning about how we were both talking about uh, his work and everything and just talking about uh, the conversations that we had. And he just kind of dropped that. Um, I'm very eloquent when I speak. And that was just kind of like a moment where I just, I kind of inside sort of lost it a little. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I don't know. I hopefully, I don't know if he could tell, I don't know. I just hopefully he didn't, but I, I kind of got a little nervous there because I'm just, nobody's ever really told me that I'm uh, eloquent as much. I mean, sometimes in writing, because I do, I do write as well. So sometimes some people will tell me, well, you write really well. And, but just to hear somebody who's been such an influence um, to me, uh, as far as writing goes, martial arts, to have that happen, just for him to actually say that is just, it just meant a lot. Yes. Uh, so yeah, it was kind of hard. After that, it was hard to not be completely like stunned and emotionally just like wrecked about the whole thing. So uh, I'm just so grateful. I'm so grateful for that experience. Um, I mean, it, it could have gone any way. Anything could have happened. So I'm just so grateful that it went so well. Well, that's so, I am so happy to hear that. I'm so happy to hear that you had that great experience uh, and were able to talk with him. And for everyone who missed it, could you hold up that signed belt again so we can sure. uh, see the signature? Okay, yeah. so this is your white belt. And then that's, and then what, what does it say? 
it says, hold on. It's a little, it's such worn out, so it's kind of like scribbled on here. Let's see. It says to Christine, and then it says thank you, dash Thomas Ian Griffith. I mean, he oh, wow. asked if I should write, if he should just write his name or whatever. I was like, go for it, anything you want. So pretty much that's what it says. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. that's so great. Yeah. And then here, I'm going to, I'm going to put this, I'm going to put this up. Oh. Check this out. Okay. So this is, so this is the photo op later, My right? My maniacal smile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's gr what a great picture. That, that is so great. A great wonderful picture so and you can like you're getting this framed i assume as of right now it's kind of it's uh sitting here in the plastic amongst other uh i have a few other uh, little autograph things uh like my robert mark Kamen autograph uh thing from a event that he did uh, i have yet to put in a frame but for now it's just sort of sitting up there on a fireplace in my room so Hopefully soon I'll get it framed. As of right now, that's a scan. I, I did a scan copy of it, so nice. So you'd have it, yeah. Well, what what an amazing picture! And then you also have this one. Right. Oops, sorry, <laughs> this one. So this is you with Thomas E. Griffith and right. William Zabka. My goodness! Wow. Just like it off to the side. I mean, I've always liked uh, uh, Johnny Lawrence. Was always a uh, a favorite of mine as well. Um, and then especially with Cobra Kai in the first two seasons, I was really always rooting for him because I saw a lot of Johnny in me. Uh, there's two two years of my life. I was like kind of in a rut. So uh, I was a lot like Johnny at one point, like the female version of Johnny. So for me, it was nice to uh, see such a change uh, in Johnny in the later seasons and how he just sort of overcomes the obstacles. So that's always great. So I was like, I gotta, I gotta take a picture with him at some point. Cause I had gone to um, an event uh, in Calgary with my friend and he was supposed to be there. It was a convention as well. Uh, and he didn't show up. So we ended up leaving the convention. We didn't, uh, we didn't stay. She was really disappointed. So uh, we, we, I mean, Martin Cove was there. So we, we did a, we took a photo with him and we, uh, so it was still a great experience. It was I'd never met her, so it was nice to finally meet a friend. Uh, but it was kind of a bummer. So we just kind of did our thing with Marty and then just sort of spend the rest of the day just hanging out together. It didn't even feel like we were at a con. So I, I don't even mention it as being at a con. It was more like a, just a friend experience. But anyway, uh, so it was nice yeah. to finally get that opportunity to meet uh, William Zapka as well. Um, just kind of tell him. Because oddly enough, the dojo that I go to, um, the sensei uh, is friends uh, with uh, William Zapka, uh, and actually another student is as well. Uh, they kind of have like a sister-brother bond, <laughs> her and William Zapka. So I kind of mentioned that, and he was like, wow, like that's amazing that you know them. And so it was mm -hmm. cool. It was cool to just finally get that opportunity to talk to him. So I was like, well, Silver does beat up <laughs> Johnny. And <laughs> one too many times so i was like it'll be interesting to do a funny photo but we just couldn't get a chance to do it they just uh, take those photos so quickly so you never get yes. a proper chance and people who do i'm always kind of stunned i'm like how'd you get the person to like do that or like finger mm -hmm. guns or hugs and i don't know how that even happens but anyway it's still it was such an experience and then uh especially taking that photo is uh, a good time so, same with taking the other photo as well uh kind of had um some another fun interchange as well uh while taking that photo uh so oh, yeah yeah what oh so uh what did you guys uh talk about again when you met uh, nothing again? it's just sort of kind of just thank you again for for everything and he just kind of told the handler she's like oh this girl right here is amazing she does such a great job and nice. uh, the handler was kind of like sort of shock like okay like uh, I, she's like i i didn't know um i didn't know the handlers were there usually uh it was kind of like out of nowhere she, i just saw her sitting in the corner and he was just so excited to meet me and i kind of felt like oh like this is this is just such an, a surreal unexpected moment and it's just um everything since then has been just amazing 
just the thought of everything that's happened is just so we'll go down in history sort of my history at least like memories will always be there so um i don't know if i'm <laughs> butchering my experience at all or talking like uh gushing oh, too no. much but oh anyway. no this is this is wonderful this is wonderful to hear and i here's my question for you uh, being such a Thomas Ian Griffith fan and you're posting content from all his stuff and you've seen so many things that he's been in. Right. Um, and he's played all these Sweating. different characters in person. What would you say his personality is like compared to maybe like the different roles he's played? Is it, is he completely different? Is there a certain role that he's most like, uh, I don't know. How does he strike you in person? Honestly, it's just really friendly, uh, really nice. Uh, it's kind of like if you go into meeting somebody that you've never met or if you're meeting a celebrity, sometimes there's that anxiety that sort of like, oh, like, oh, man, uh, are they going to hate me, think I'm that kind of fan and am I weirdo or whatever? But it's just like the minute he kind of talks to you, opens his mouth and just says uh even hello, it's just kind of like there's like that aura. There's this very positive energy um, and just kind of open to hearing things and just looking at things and people were, you know, I was watching certain, the person before me, obviously I couldn't see anybody else, but the person who was getting stuff signed before, um, it was very gracious to them. And then also the fan was very gracious. So that's also a positive because I know sometimes fans could be very, um, pushy, kind of aggressive. I mean, depending, I mean, that's not everybody. I don't want to generalize, but uh, long story short, it was just, it was very open to talking to people and meeting people. So and I think that's a definite positive. And I think that's uh, something that every fan meeting the person that, that uh, has influenced them uh, or has been a positive presence in their life. I think it's such a great quality. And I think that's, uh, something everybody who's a fan of anything would want or expect, you know? And so for me, I think it's, it was, it just blew everything out of the water. And I mean, I was just so grateful that uh, he was able to talk to me for so long. I mean, time just sort of flew by, honestly, talking mm -hmm. to him. It just sort of felt like an old friend in a way. And, um, you know, like there's a quote in a Rush song that says, uh, you can't pretend a stranger is a long awaited friend. And I think for me, uh, it was the opposite. I know we're not, we're complete strangers. I'd never met him before. Uh, I've just always been sort of, there's been a difference between a fan and an actor and everything like that. And I always know that there's a separation, uh, but just for a second, it kind of felt like I was just talking to an old friend that I hadn't seen in years. So it just, it, it sort of felt like it was a continuation of, something that was already there. It's that kind of feeling that you get uh, when you meet uh, Thomas Ian Griffith. So I'm hoping that wow. this means there's more cons ahead because uh, I would really love everybody to meet him. I think he's just a great person. And uh, as far as the character that uh, he's like, honestly, I don't think so. I, I, I really don't see, I don't know, it's weird because I don't see Terry Silver as a awful guy. Um, there's a really great quote that I read about um, villains that, you know, we often see them do bad things, but we don't know why. Right. So we never know the reason why. And so I always think that there was always, there's some goodness in Terry, despite public belief, like how mm -hmm. he was with Kenny, for example. Uh, I, I thought there was a genuine friendship there. And I was really or sensei student relationship as well. And like, there's something endearing about Kenny and Terry Silver. And then just to see Kenny throw that shirt on him, it was kind of like, oh man, <laughs> yeah. why is this happening? Uh, but, you know, and I think that's, I would say there really isn't anybody. I mean, he's just such a good uh, character actor. I think he's a chameleon in a way. He's very good at um, making you, sorry, that's on my, uh, but essentially he's very, his own person. I think that mm -hmm. there's, I can't shoo him into it. Uh, the, I can't shoo him, shoo in Terry, uh, T I G in any <laughs> character's shoes. Um, but I would say, I think, let's see, maybe there's, there's one character that I would say that he does have some qualities is, um, 
think it's in one of the made-for-TV films that he did. Um, I think I just rewatched it recently too. Um, it, it's a, it's a very like it's a, just a good-hearted person, a good-hearted character, and mm -hmm. I think that that's um, the closest. Uh, I think it's Porter Main. I think is the name mm -hmm. of the character. Uh, it's okay. one of those yes. like yeah, a high adventure or something like that. I mean, he's an adventurer explorer, but there's like a goodness to the character, and I always kind of equated that to that. And so this is always a very He's got a good spirit. He's very uh, energetic. Um, so uh, and there's that quality, I think I would say. Just very, uh, just outspoken, very um, just humble also. Um, I mean, it's just such an accomplished person. And to have uh, such a humble demeanor is great, I think. Uh, so for me, it was just a pleasure. It was a pleasure to meet him, pleasure to... Uh, have any exchange after that um and then uh just how how gracious he was to me at this event uh, i use that word a lot gracious because i just such a it's an impactful word in a way i mean because mm -hmm. it's it's a sm small world small word it's a soft word but it also just has so much uh meaning behind it so i think it's it's definitely a good quality and i think that's one of the Whenever anybody asks me about uh, Thomas Ian Griffin, I'm always saying that. It's just very gracious, very kind, and it's like unexpectedly kind. Like I would never, right. never in my, never in a million years would I thought uh, I'd have such a positive experience. So. That's wonderful. And, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm so happy to hear about this. It's such, it sounds like such an epic, such a great experience. And how, how wonderful is that to, you know, have, done all this work you know because you enjoy the work of thomas Ian griffith and you know you're sharing it but he he recognizes you he knows who you are and you're able to talk uh like your old friends and uh he signed that belt which means so much to you uh w what a wonderful experience uh and uh just i'm i'm real happy for you and Thank you. um yeah and i think that's just like a consistent thing is thomas Ian griffith as a person just everyone is just talking about how gracious he is how nice he is how wonderful he is to to work with and um so that's so great and i hope that he keeps doing conventions so more fans can meet him and yeah. um you know he's it, just a great actor and it's great when he shares his time uh like that and uh let let me go to a, a few comments a wild sure. man beyond thank you for the super chat thoughts on hillary swank's answer to a return do you want her to come back of course i'd love hillary swank to come back I would love Hillary Swank to be in a scene with Thomas Ian Griffith, to be honest. So um, I hope they they can make that happen. Um, OK, you guys have written so many great comments. Let me. Uh, uh, John Toomey says she likes Rush. Cool. Uh, my husband does. <laughs> I like Rush, too. I've seen them several times, but it's not my particular genre. But anyway, it's cool. <laughs> Um, Claude Leon, I think I saw you, uh, giving us a, a sticker. Thank you so much for your support of the channel. Uh, yep. Living, living in the, uh, limelight, um, is around. He looks better without the ponytail. It worked when he was young, but now it looks silly. I, you know what? I, I think he rocks, uh, the short hair. I think he rocks the medium hair, the long hair right. and with the ponytail. I think, I think he looks good. Uh, you know, it just works no matter right. what kind of hair. I don't know. Do you have a preference? Me? Christine? Uh, no, I, I mean, I could just go and be biased and say I like any which way. Uh, I think I would even like with the bag on his head. That's kind of like the joke I always make because people are like, oh, like, you know, it's like, what's the appeal or what, what is it that you like? Not in a like negative way. They're just always like, oh, so what is it that you like about it? I just think I just he, he can always look different, but still the same. And it's it's something that's endearing to me. And I think personally, I, I like the excessive force look the most. Oh, I mean, yeah. I like yeah. I like ponytails a lot. Actually, there's a kind of a trend that everybody that I'm I've ever been really close friends with has always had a ponytail. People are like, "You just chase the ponytail." I'm like, "That's not true." Uh, but right. uh, no, I I think the ponytail is great. I think uh, I honestly wish that um, a lot of the characters that he's played have had. Uh, 
longer hair, but uh, it's fine. I, I like anything. I mean, I even like uh, in Time Cop, those uh, Billy Idol <laughs> locks are cool. Uh, anything. I think it's just he's, like I said, he's a chameleon. He can pretty much take up any look, any sort of uh, role, and it works It works for him. Uh, yeah. I know you brought up uh, excessive force and it made right. me wonder, my goodness, if Terry McCain, because we talked about excessive force, right. we did a whole live stream on it. Everyone should check it out. Uh, but I thought, well, you know, you're making me think of Terry McCain, that character coming back now right. and uh, w- with his hair, but uh, you know, as, as like gray hair or silver hair, that, that, that would be really cool. Um, Chase says, I 110% agree with you, Christine, about silver and pain and uh, and Kenny Payne. Robana, thank you for being a member, Robana. Oh, I wish I'd known you were in Calgary. I would have met up with you, Christine. Very cool. Kind of happened uh, last minute. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, Andrew says, I want to see Terry and Ally meet. That would be very interesting. Um, Deanna says, he's such a cool <laughs> guy. I have such a big crush on him. <laughs> it's, yeah, he's, he's, uh, I'm, Definitely, definitely very understandable. Jay uh, Wiggins says, a TIG with a mohawk, yes. Uh, Michelle, I like Tofu Terry, <laughs> which is oh great. God. Yes. <laughs> um, let's see. Drew says his excessive force look is awesome. I always think of that pic uh, of him with the sunglasses. Right. Yes. Uh, Terry Johnson, good to see you, Terry. Terry looked good in all forms. Uh, Alexandra says, excessive force is such a vibe. Perfect look. Uh, friggin love Terry McCain and excessive force. See excessive force has a lot of fans. I right. think we, we need, we need that Blu-ray release with like uh, tons of special yeah. features. We totally do. For um, sure. I mean, I think it'll be great. Yeah. Uh, and it, right. It's got Tony Todd in it. Um, and Andrew says, yes, Thomas and Griffith wrote excessive force. And yeah. that that's honestly, that's what he's been doing before Cobra Kai. Right. Uh, he, he's been a writer producer uh, and, way back in the day uh he wrote and produced excessive force so everyone check it out uh i think you mentioned christine hollow point um uh, mm-hmm. and that mm-hmm. everyone should should check out hollow point maybe we'll have to um you know review that or talk about that at some point yeah i mean um, hollow point's got a lot of uh, uh really interesting dynamics in it and i think also he's got really great comedic timing and i think hollow point's a good uh show of that uh i think uh, it's definitely a, a film uh, that should be viewed again. <laughs> so, oh yeah, a hundred percent. And Kate, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming. Um, we're we're still here. We're still talking about uh, Thomas Ian Griffith and Fan X. So, Christine, we also have, and let me put this up. Um, you were there for the. You know, we talked about you meeting him and talking. Right. and getting a picture but there was this whole panel right and and tell me about the panel and who is there and uh kind of kind of what we're looking at and what did you learn from the panel so uh the panel had uh well all of the Cobra Kai guests um uh, we had uh Jolo we had um Mary Mauser you had Jacob uh Bertrand you had William Zapka you had Thomas C. Griffith you had uh who else was there uh, no, that was just it. It was just a few of them. Um, I think that's all of them there uh, in the corner. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Tanner was also there. Um, Tanner is a great kid. Uh, I tried my best to meet up with everybody. I mean, I was really pressed for time. So I kind of did. Uh, I just mainly it was mainly for, you know, Thomas C. And Griffin. And then I squeezed in uh, Tanner and uh, William Zapka. I unfortunately couldn't get to Mary and I couldn't get to Zolo. Uh, Jacob, I did. Uh, I had to get something signed for a friend that I had met Jacob once before elsewhere. Um, but anyway, um, so they brought him in with uh, Thunder Thunderstruck by ACDC. That, oh, wow. that's, they, they played that as, as they were slowly trickling them in. Um, and then they just did sort of uh, on the screen on the side, uh, they had just clips of them individually. So they had like scenes of uh, Tanner. Uh, doing his thing, and then Mary doing her thing as their characters. And then uh, Thomas E. Griffin, they had him there. Uh, and then it was it was an interesting setup. Uh, I thought they were going to have questions from the moderator because uh, I, had, I hadn't gone to the other panel events. Uh, just 
I wasn't there for that. So I just didn't have an interest, but like there was like a, um, anime one. And I think there was another one with, there was two Backstreet Boys there. So they had a Backstreet Boys panel. <laughs> I don't know why for just the two of them, but, uh, anyway, uh, so I guess they, they, all of them had a panel, uh, I think a panel moderator asking questions, but for them, it was just a Q and a, uh, with the audience. So audience members got up and asked questions. Uh, you had, you kind of a mixed bag. I mean, some people had really like intelligent questions. Some people had kind of just sort of halfway in between. Some people were just like, Oh, what's your favorite food? What's your favorite color? Uh, a lot of like those sort of uh, almost there were some juvenile questions and there were some questions I mean not to belittle anybody asking any questions but that's just for me I was kind of like uh, I kind of would have wished you know the moderator had asked some things uh, so, so when they open up to the audience you kind of you might get the same kind of questions asked to the same uh, person and oftentimes, right. uh, a lot of the younger people in the crowd were asking questions of uh, Tanner and Mary and Zolo and Jacob and uh, a lot to William Zapka. And I wish there were more questions asked uh, to Thomasine Griffin. A lot of the questions were sort of the ones that were at least sort of directed to him as well were sort of for everybody on stage. Uh, so not too many in-depth like Cobra Kai questions. Uh, but there was one question that did stand out to me, which was about um, bullying, for example, and like mm -hmm. if they had any advice on bullying. Because um, I've always, I always bring this up, but uh, I was like a victim myself of bullying, and a lot of people are uh, growing up. Uh, so for me, it was really poignant to hear what William Zapka had to say, and as well as what you know Thomasine Griffin had to say, and then having to kind of incorporate martial arts with it and the importance of uh, kind of being able to stand up for yourself, but also if you're struggling uh, and you need help and it's beyond you to not be afraid to reach out. And maybe it's against the Cobra Kai sort of standpoint of strike hard, you know, strike first and whatnot. Uh, but it's just sort of, it was endearing. It was endearing to see people of such strength and especially on such a show like that as two senseis to kind of mention that uh it was a great it was a great question i mean it was more of like a statement than a question mm -hmm. but then they sort of spun off of that uh and then there was one asking about i think if any of them had done martial arts in the past and so uh it was nice to hear that the cast some of them had done some in the past some had just never done it before and so they were for the first time uh, like mary had mentioned about how she had never done an inch of karate in her life. And <laughs> she thought she came on as going to be the daughter of, uh, you know, the karate kid and uh, a love interest. And she never thought that she would actually be uh, able to do karate herself and have to train with stunt guys and uh, to actually work with someone like Thomasine Griffin, who had done martial arts before for years and uh, someone so experienced. Uh, to just watch them. It was just, it was nice to hear what they all had to say. Yeah, absolutely. So what you, you know, we've talked about you meeting Thomasine Griffith. <laughs> um, we've talked about you, him congratulating you and actually recognizing <laughs> your, your yeah. amazing work that you do on your Twitter and Instagram channels, which everyone needs to go follow right now. If you're watching and haven't done that. Um, what did you, what did you come away with? If you could sum it up, what did you come away with from this Fan X convention uh, where you met Thomas Ian Griffith? Um, it's kind of something I already, I think I made a Twitter post about um, where I said that, you know, that cliche of never meet your, your heroes or that people always tell you don't do it because uh, it may not be what you think or um, I forget the whole of that statement, but it's just you might be disappointed uh, you may not come back from it uh, feeling happy or giddy or uh, being touched or having your soul touched in any way. And I think for me, it was the opposite. And I will never prescribe to that cliche because it, it's, it was nothing but humbling, uh, nothing but uh, it was it's something straight out of sort of a 
a dream sequence, um, not to sound like a fangirl or anything, but it was just sort of, uh, everything was kind of like the opposite of what I thought was going to happen as dreams are the opposite of reality. So I, I honestly, I thought that um, it would just sort of be just another thing that I did uh, because I had to, because I feel like uh, as such a big fan, it was like inevitable that I'd have to meet him. But I just, I just, I, I talked like that because I just didn't want to set myself up for any uh, anxiety or disappointment. Cause uh, like I right. mentioned before, that happens a lot. Uh, whenever I have to meet anybody, even if it's like a coworker that I've never met uh, or it's somebody that, um, whatever business meeting or something client. So for me, it was sort of like, I didn't go up with too many expectations. And then just to have all my expectations, I was full of joy, full of excitement going there. Uh, obviously, uh, like I mentioned, I could barely even like sleep because I was just so, so anxious, like happy, excited, you know, uh, cause it was like a once in a lifetime opportunity that was just fell in my plate. Actually this entire year, uh, I mean, we're coming to the close of the year soon. So for me, this whole year has been kind of a surreal experience, not just with Cobra Kai, but just everything. Uh, I've just overcome so much this year and to have such gifts kind of given to me in a way uh, without even having to do much. Uh, like I said, I think uh, to have him actually uh, just almost feel like I was – one in his shoes instead it was kind of like i wasn't the fan anymore like i was the person that was being told oh i'm like such a fan of your work or what you do i mean i don't want to look into it too much i mean i don't know what was in his mind or how he felt but um just he's he's been so gracious since then uh just uh, i haven't really ch obviously haven't chatted or anything but when uh i set up the instagram i had i had just done the, the like work I had just set up the skeleton of the page which is not much to it but I kind of just sort of said okay I did it I left it and then I had forgotten somehow to follow him or Mary so I was like oh shoot uh, and then all of a sudden I get this message saying uh, you know welcome to Instagram and just it, it's it's been very surreal I, I keep using that word surreal because there's just no other word in my mind right now uh just of such an incredible uh, experience. Uh, I mean, I was almost at a loss for words, even talking to, to him because I didn't expect to be, uh, you know, I, I just thought, okay, thank you. And you know, for what I do. And I, I always just sort of think of what I do is it's, it's something that I just had to do. I felt like I was giving back to uh, him by supporting him for all the stuff that he's done for me without, you know, even knowing about it, uh, just, you know, influencing me into martial arts and sort of um, helping me through a bad rough patch in my life and things like that. So just to have that experience and to be told um, that uh, he's grateful for what I do is just something, uh, something fabulous, something personal that I will just like, it's hard for me sometimes to talk about it without getting really emotional. So I'm sorry if I, Absolutely. I'm like rambling a lot, but it's just for me, it was such an amazing experience. Well, well, that's great. We have a comment from Terry that says, well, you deserve it, Christine. So glad you had a great experience with him. I knew it would go good and he's a good person to meet. Yeah. And thank you, Terry. And thank then you. Gabe says, pat, pat yourself on the back. You deserve <laughs> it. Thank you. <laughs> Yes. And um, you really do such an amazing job. One of the things I'm most impressed with every day, and I'm a huge fan of Thomas Ian Griffith, but I am so impressed how every day you have something new and you're posting things that I've never seen before. Uh, right. it, it's, it's really something. And then sometimes you post things from multiple projects together in right. a way that I've never seen before. And so um, it's just very cool. Anyone who's a fan of Terry Silver and Thomas Ian Griffith, I'll say it again, follow Tig Daily. <laughs> it's worth it. It's fun. Uh, it it brings up your day uh, for sure. And uh, anyway, Christine, it's been amazing just listening to the story. I think it makes all fans happy to hear this. It's like what I think every fan would wish uh, could happen, you know, when they meet, you know, someone they're a fan of. And it doesn't always happen like this with all the different celebrities yeah. out there. And I think in this case, uh, you are a fan of Thomas Ian Griffith 
And of course that turned into a wonderful experience. Yeah. And you know, it's like, uh, I was going to mention another thing before we, uh, if we end here or not, but, um, about, you know, I, everything that I do is pretty much, it comes from, uh, internal place of uh, appreciation and just a genuine, uh, love for the guy, for the work that he does. Um, it's just, for me, that's the only reason why I, I do it. Uh, I was really motivated out of that reason. Um, and then it just sort of, people started to kind of grab onto it and they started to really appreciate it. So any amount of like appreciation and any positive feedback that I get about the page is just always so uplifting for me. And it's it's just nice to to see it, you know, and to hear about it, uh, even if I'm not as responsive all the time, uh, just because of work and life. It just for me, just to have that, knowing that um, that whatever I could possibly do uh, means anything to anybody is, is just a phenomenal concept. It's almost like I can't believe it sometimes um, how far or how whatever I've gotten at all. Um, I, I did this, you know, I didn't even expect, I didn't even think, you know, Thomas C. Griffith would follow me or, you know, even say a word or anything. I just honestly was just doing it out of the goodness of my heart. So uh, to have all that just sort of serendipitously just happen and without force, without trying to do too much, you know, out of the blue and just, it, it just means a lot that sort of a passion of mine or just a genuine uh, interest and like of a person can just generate that kind of thing. So it's, it's, it's great. <laughs> so. Well, Melissa has a comment, Christine, you're absolutely incredible, kind, caring, and deserve nothing but the best. Traumas truly is the best. Yes, yes, the best. Thank, yeah. thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you very thank much. You. Uh, Kate Maloney. I'm curious as to what Ken would have asked Tom St. Griffin. I have a million questions. I would have to probably really think hard if I only got to ask him one question. It's the ordeal. <laughs> Yeah, I know it's, I'd be going through exactly what Christine went through. It's like, what, what the heck, you know, what, what should I ask yeah. him? What should I say? You, um, could script it. you could script it as many times as you want. I mean, I had stuff flowing in my head, like going there days before, just I, after a while, I was just like, eh, whatever comes to my head, it'll come to my head. If I make a fool of myself, I made a fool of myself. There's right. <laughs> nothing else I could say. So Absolutely. Well, Christine, thank you for spending this time and sharing thank your you. experience with all of us. Uh, did he happen to say if he was going to appear at any future conventions or anything like that? Uh, no, he didn't say much about that. I, I actually didn't even, I kind of didn't ask. It didn't also didn't cross my mind just because there's so much stuff going on in my head. Uh, but I, I mean, I can see it. I mean, everybody was pretty gentle and kind from what I saw. And, uh, like even in lines for the photo ops, people were very like, oh, this is amazing that he's doing this. And and to have that first convention be so amazing, I think, uh, so positive. I mean, just for me as an, as somebody going to the event, um, it was very organized. People were very, very kind. They were very conscientious. From my experience, uh, nobody was like manhandling anybody uh, compared to my other convention experiences that sort of turned me off. So now it's like once in a blue moon, if ever I'll do anything, uh, usually to accompany someone else. But for me, I think it's, it would be great. It would be great to see if he does more. And I think, uh, I don't know, I think it was, it, it went pretty well from what I saw. So I think it's definitely possible for another convention to happen. Um, and I think there was actually something I'd heard that, you know, um, Ralph Macchio had said that he wanted to do a convention. As some a fan told me uh, that he talked to, uh, or she talked to uh, Ralph Macchio at a convention and asked if you know TIG would do a convention. And he said that you know uh, I think he's thinking about it or not. And it just made it seem like if he did one, he was going to do it with Ralph. But I don't know. That didn't happen. So I thought right. maybe the first one would be with Ralph, but it, it ended up being just him. And then obviously William Zapka was added much later. Like I had just at that time, it was just him, Jacob, and I think Mary were announced. Oh, and then wow. slowly Zolo and everybody else was announced. So, wow. Uh, yeah, I hope so. Well, I hope we get another event. It'd be great. 
that would be great. And then everyone can think about what question they'd ask. Uh, for instance, yeah. Peter Bonasak from Cobra Kai Companion Podcast says, my dumbest question, have you always been tall? I was <laughs> nervous. Yes, it, that's that's right. I think I might have been there when you asked that. Or you asked, how's the weather up there? Uh, which which is which is really great. Uh, Kate says, can you really need to get Tom Seagroth on Kate? Oh, yeah. Hey, absolutely. If if he's willing, absolutely, hundred percent, live or pre-recorded, that's totally fine. Yeah. Drew <laughs> says we need to petition, petition him to join, being an epic Ken cast. Well, you know, that's this is. I mean, to me, it's and I got a chance to meet him once back in in April, which was which was really incredible. And then yeah. having Christine here, just kind of talking about her experience, it's just it's amazing because um, it really just goes to show how. Uh, gracious he is and i think christine used that word and it's a very good word very um very gracious uh so christine thank you so much for joining us tonight and um is there anything you'd like to say to anyone about um your channel or uh, any other topic before we end tonight uh just i'm flattered by all the support uh all the time and i'm glad you know uh, a lot of you guys came over to the instagram page as well i'm just gonna try to run them both simultaneously. I'll post whatever I post uh, on one, on the other. Um, I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to think of some new things I could do, you know, some sort of like little, of not events, but like, I don't know, I don't even know if, if a giveaway is the right word, but I, I was thinking of doing stuff, but I, I just can't uh, get my mind to come up with a solid idea or game plan. Uh, of like maybe something I could do like once a month or something like that. I don't know, like a special post or contest or something. But, you know, I mean, none of what I do is for, you know, profit or anything like that. So I don't know. Sure. <laughs> I don't know what I could really do to make it any more interactive. Uh, but I try to post just instead of doing that when I can, because uh, I can't think of any sort of little events to do. I mean, I know you guys like have the, you have the Ken cast and then uh, Peter does like interviews and things like that. So right. I don't know, so, but hopefully one day I could come up with something to do more interactive. But uh, as of right now, I'm just grateful for the support and uh, just, uh, you know, you guys just kind of make it worthwhile. So well, that's great. We have a comment from Terry Johnson. Uh, thank you, Christine, for saying hi and spending some of your, some of your of time with me. It was so great to meet you and hang out with a fellow fan. Uh, Deanna says, yeah, I love you guys. Thanks for this. Well, thank you, Deanna. Thanks, <laughs> thank thanks for joining. Drew says, thank you for a great discussion. Ken and Christine, loved hearing about your experience. Um, Robana, keep up the good work, Christine. Uh, thank and you. And Jay, Jay says, good night, everyone. Well, Thank you, everyone, for watching. I really appreciate you guys joining us. Um, I know a lot of you are Terry Silver fans, so I hope you enjoy learning a little bit about Christine's experience thank with you. Thomasine yeah. Griffith. And uh, thank you again, Christine. Always wonderful to talk to you and have you yeah. here uh, on KenCast. And um, hopefully, I wasn't right. too overwhelming. <laughs> so. Oh no, it's great. We, um, I'm thankful for all the detail uh, you gave and, uh, you know, I think it's something that everyone could relate to and, um, thank you so much for joining us and I uh, look forward to having you back. Soon. Having Absolutely. Um, all right, everyone have a good night and we'll see good you night. next Take time. Care, guys. <laughs> we'll see you <laughs> see on you. next time on Tencast. All right. Bye. bye. Thank you for joining us tonight. And we look forward to seeing you next time on KenCast.